today I am with the iconic singer Lulu. Never ever ever wear skirts or dresses. Not anymore. I did that. I sort of feel I did that so much in the 60s and 70s and even 80s. And I, I really do believe that as a woman gets older, especially, well, it may be it's especially me to me, because I am sort of still in the public eye and I still work. So to be true to myself and not look like, what did they say, a mutton dressed as lamb? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, to be true to myself, I think the trousers and the jacket thing became my uniform for a long time. And there would be sometimes like they'd be a little torn or, you know, they'd have some kind of edge to it. I tell you who became one of my icons, and you probably don't even know her. Most people here wouldn't know her, but she's a hairdresser called Sally Hirschberger. And mm -hmm. Sally dresses a little bit more like a, a boy than a girl. I really like that look best. Mm. But I'm also like the feminine thing too. So I'm a bit of a chameleon, mm. but for work, I like to keep it edgy and keep my legs out of it. Because first of all, my knees have gone. Mm -hmm. They're wrinkly as hell. So I don't want to show them, I don't want to show them. And I, I think once I put a skirt on, I look like I've come from the sixties again. You know, mm. it just, so I, it's not easy. It's yeah. not easy to find your look. And French women are really good at it, I feel. Do you? They are, but I mean, you know, you look at a French woman, again, it is very much a uniform and it's the tailored trouser and it's the little jacket and it's, you know. And they keep it black and black and navy blue, black and navy blue, blue. and you, white. The way, and that, uh, to me, I find that really boring and, and aging. Quite and frankly. I would too, I would too. It's like an office outfit, yeah. go to the office, yeah. Exactly. Whereas you, this, and, and I, I really admire your style, Lulu, especially now. Oh, thank you. And I mean this, and I'm, try, I'm trying to put it into words, but you have that rock edge, but it's not, you know, you put on a leather jacket, and, sorry, dogs in the background, you put on a leather jacket, ah. or you wear a fedora, but it's not muttony. You don't look muttony. If I put on the leather jacket or the hat, I would look muttony. And I'm trying to work out why that is. And I think it's because you've got very strong features. I think you've got a strong, really? yeah, I think you've got a strong face. And I don't know. Whereas I got quite a sort of, you know, kind of soft face that it doesn't. I, I just look like. I don't know, I can't, I can't, I'm gonna to have to think this one through. I think it's a lot to do with my shape, my size. I have to counteract the fact that really, I have what people still to this day, a look that's cute. That word drives me because it's probably true. You know, you have a, the shape of face that I have. I've studied this too, as much as you have. Mm. And also I have a really good friend. I'm in cahoots with someone who is exactly my size, has probably the similar face. And uh, we like the same music, we like the same style. We sort of think very similarly. She's a businesswoman. She actually was John Frieda's 50-50 partner. She made John famous. She made John successful. And she's, uh, she's kind of like my twin. Mm. And we are study, watch, and we think the same. So we don't argue. No, that's not right. I go, absolutely, got it. Oh, yes. She'll say, oh, I, that, don't, you can't wear that. And I go, why? She goes, look, it, it's not right. I go, oh, absolutely. She says, it's like you look like top heavy or you. We just kind of think the same. And that's got a lot to do with it, relationships in life, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You're on the same page. So we uh, figure it out because we have similar issues too. Mm. Our height around sort of full face. So I have to counteract that round cuteness, if you like, which means that I probably look maybe young from a distance because of the shape of my face and because of my sight and my shape. But in fact, when it comes to dealing with putting clothes on, it's really, I think for anyone, it's hard work. And when people complain to me about whatever the issues are, I say, that's your issue, you wanna hear mine? You have to sit down, because we take a long time. But you know, we all, as long as we know what our issues is and we have to counteract them, or, yeah. or bring our, our 
which is more important to be positive, of yeah. course, is to bring out our assets. Yeah. And I think when I wear uh, something that's structured, I don't have very big shoulders. You've got big shoulders. You don't have to wear. I wear shoulder pads all the time. And I can't believe I haven't got them in. I wear them all the time. My brother kills himself. He says, have you got your boulder shads in? <laughs> You've forgotten your boulder shads. Oh my God, you better go home. But you've got, I mean, you do have a lot of fun. You know, it's like. When, <laughs> and it's fun. Yeah. yeah Came to see, we came to see you playing with um, Take That. With Cisabelle. You did, with Isabel. My daughter is Lulu's goddaughter. <laughs> and you wore, you look so great because you had this hat, you had, I think you were wearing jeans underneath and this little vest and your really fabulous jewellery and all your rings. And then this wonderful flowing, very light fabric robe. That, that kind came of from Camilla. Where does it come from? She's Camilla, she's Australian and she's unbelievably talented. Yeah, I and know. I and a lot of girls wear her outfits on the beach. And to be honest with you, too many certain types of girls wear those outfits on the beach, yeah. and I wouldn't be seen dead in them. Yeah, no, I agree. Because it's just the wrong thing for me. Well, yeah. first of all, they become too too sort of common. There, everybody's got this, and you walk up the beach, somebody's got your outfit on. Yeah, and if you but, wear something like that, they make they make women of our age look older. Well, think, you're way younger than me. But really. when you, when you, the, the key is, it's how to marry them. Yeah. Where with the hat that I had on, you called it a fedora. I would never call it a fedora and I don't know what it is, but it was a black hat. And it's kind of like, um, Clint Eastwood would maybe wear that hat, you know, but it was black. He wouldn't wear a black one. So I wore this, it was like a cloak, but it was huge. And of course, they let me do this. The boy said to me, you, I know you're like, you know, you could probably pick your outfit yourself. We've got all these amazing outfits, thousands of outfits. And I, I said, I think I've got the outfit. So I had these very tight leggings, jeans, leggings, whatever they were. And I initially went along with very high heels. It's Yves Saint Laurent, the fabulous sandals, mm. which after the second night, I threw them away. I mean, not through, but threw them in the dressing room and never wore them again. And I put my sneakers on, I put my converse yeah. on. So I mixed the converse with this big flowered thing, which was rather a uh, glamorous fantasy. And then the hat brought it yeah, down to earth. Exactly. The hat was, to me, the hat was rock and roll and the yeah. outfit was rock and roll. Yeah. But it had a twist to it that not everybody does. And to be honest with you, I watched Cardi B a couple of years ago on uh, maybe the American Music Awards or the Grammys or something. And she wore all flowers and color and color and color. And I thought, I can't just wear black. I've got to have color. So mm. that's what I thought about. Yeah, no, it's great. And darling, have you, is there anything, do you have like a go-to outfit now? Do you, is there something where you're going in? This thing I've got on right now is so old. This is a go-to every time I don't know what to wear and it's warm. Mm. And this is my, well, a girlfriend of mine makes them. She's Indian and they're Indian, but it's like that very thin cotton. Yeah. And it, it's, 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 um, a tunic, you know, it's, it's like Indians wear them. I don't know what, it's not a kurta. What is, it's like a, it's like a kurta, but, but it's, it just goes to, uh, I always, at my age, I hide my bum. I don't let my crotch show, but I can wear tight pants if the, the top is long enough. So it's appropriate. I mean, I, one of my pet hates is somebody's bum hanging out. Yeah. And you see the line of their pants, which I know has been always a big thing that you've talked about. And yeah. also the shape has gone. You know, you're not little tight cheeks and you're not a young, young kids get away with a lot of things. But also that's the thing I have to watch because I'm small. I sort of, I think from a distance, I can look like I'm a young person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you get closer, you go, oh, she's a granny. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to kind of look sort of, sort of like now, but not. So my go-to outfits are long tops, pants. I love, oh, there's my dog now. My dog's got Hey. My darling, Isabel. Um, do you have, you've traveled all over the world. You still travel, obviously not in lockdown. Um, but do you have a comfort blanket? Is there something that, you, it could be an item. It needn't be an article of clothing, but something that's always with you. I'm ashamed to say it. I'm such a greedy thing. There's no one. I've got lots of things that have to go with me. I travel. My son goes, oh, for God's sake, not that. I mean, you're only coming for the weekend. Do you need to? I, I, nowadays, I need to have a cushion on my back. 
mm. whether it's on a plane or in a car. So that for comfort, and that is literally for comfort. And then I have what you're not supposed to have anymore. You can, certainly can't buy them, but I have a chatouche, which is 30, 40, I don't even know how old it is, and it's got little holes in it. It's mm. like, it's, it comes from India. That has to be around my neck. Mm. It is a comfort, it is literally a comfort blanket. So before I move, I have to have the little thing for my back. And then if it's my back's not aching, it's got to go. I've got one here right now my neck you know yeah. for traveling it's all about comfort and today I mean I used to always I would never go in flat shoes until I was 45 can you believe it and now it's mostly flats but then if I want to just pick up a little bit it's wedges yeah. that's why I wear the I wear the converse with the wedges and they're very hard to find mm. nice Nice. And then, Lulu, what about your, you've got a glamorous event. Is there something that, that, that a favourite, I guess if you would like a tuxedo suit or something? I, I kind of got bored of tuxedos now. I, 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 I actually bought, a, can you believe, just before lockdown, I bought a dress from Stella McCartney, Silver Lame. It's still got the ticket on it, of course, and it probably will lie in my wardrobe for years but it's it's a nice length it's long and I don't know where I thought I was I was going so I think I was going to a wedding mm. which I obviously didn't go to mm. um but yeah it's it's always difficult mm. it's I don't have the answers to all the questions and it's always the struggle to find the right thing but I must say isn't it marvelous when you do find something that looks cool and you it's comfortable yeah, and it's like, that's a rare yeah, thing. It's so rare, and it's like rare. finding a soulmate. I've, I get as <gasps> excited as the first day I met Steve when I find a, a dress which I know isn't going to make. Me <laughs> yes, can you tell me about David Bowie because he wrote a song for you, didn't he? Well, he didn't write the song, but he actually recorded the song with me, and he sang with me. He played on it, played sax. He produced it, and we had a little bit of a fling, David and I. But talk about fashion. I mean, he walked in. He walked into a hotel I was in Leeds with, with my producer of my television show, BBC television show, and he was with a man who had a big, funny old kind of moustache from who should be in the army. He didn't really talk like that, but he looked like that. He played a pipe, you know. And David David Bowie walks into the the lobby of the hotel in Leeds, looking like he just got off the, the ship from Mars. Yeah. He was. And white, 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 because he liked kabuki makeup. Yeah. For I those know. of you who know, it's Japanese makeup that, that yeah. is, they make the face pure white. He, his hair was not red, but orange. I mean, and he would never take the makeup quite, take the makeup off from the night before when he was on stage. So his eyes were all messed up. And I mean, he looked like a wreck, honey, from the Hesperus. Yeah. But I was taken by him because I loved his music. That's what I fell in love with, with, with Morris. I fell in love with his music, you know? And, um, and I, so I was thrilled, with, but what about those outfits? He was very influenced by Japan, yeah. by all, all those outfits. And let me tell you, if you ever can get a picture of it, he might have been skinny. A lot of my friends go, oh, he's not my type. Oh, I couldn't, oh, I couldn't have fancied him. I said, you'd have got to look at those thighs. I'm telling you, you would have fancied him. And then he'd sing to you and that was it. You'd be a goner. <laughs> he had the best thighs. He and Naomi, Naomi Campbell and, and David Bowie have the same shaped thighs. Okay. Just shows you how I study crazy things but yeah, do, they so. popped out of me i didn't even have to study them they came right up i went oh look at them oh, oh darling you are a goddess you will <laughs> always be a goddess to me and um it's just so interesting talking to you as lulu as opposed to lulu poo paper pants i've learned so, you have, have to explain what that is that your children gave me that name we went to see the lulu is my youngest daughter's godmother, and we went to see her concert in Brighton. And all very excited. The kids were quite. Was excited. I on with Jules Holland? No, you weren't. You were with oh, Anastasia. Was that time? Oh. Anastasia and Shafiq Khan, right? And then we we turned up and we made this big banner saying Auntie Lulu poop paper pants, which was like like <laughs> paper coming off it. And <laughs> that's how it's I. 
And I came on stage and could hardly hold myself together because I then you had myself. you got all of them up on stage. You had like Joe was on the tambourine, kind of wanting to die. He was hating everyone. Oh. And then CC was on the maraca or something, and Esme was doing something else. It was such a moment. You were so oh. yeah, it's amazing. Well, they're, great. they're great children. I mean, you you know you you and Steen have done the most unbelievable job with those kids. Well. And you would it's amazing to me. I mean, I can't, I don't know how they've survived. No idea. <laughs> I think that about Jordan too. I think <laughs> Lulu, what is the, if your house was burning down, God forbid, and you had to say one outfit, one iconic outfit, what would it be? Well, they're not here anymore. And to be fair to you, I wouldn't save any clothes. I wouldn't bother at all. Just what I had on. Today, my my values have shifted so much because it's more about the inside job than the outside job. Mm -hmm. But if I had them and I have, I gave one to I think I think because one was a Bill Gibb outfit, the one the outfit I married John Frieda in, I gave that to a museum. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I wore for Morris. I haven't got that either. I don't know what happens. I think I gave it some some other something charity or something. But this is the funny thing. I love these outfits so much because the one I married Morris in, I kind of copied a, uh, a Dr. Zhivago look. Mm. <laughs> you know, with the hood and the oh. mink around the the fur around the and the toggles on the <laughs> and uh, in white. And then what I married John in was a little bit Lawrence of Arabia. Okay. So I said, I, in the end, I actually said to someone once, and I thought it was very funny, but nobody even bothered to, to come back on it. I think I should have married David Lean. I mean, I just loved his films. <laughs> because, but there am I, you know, dressing up. I do love to dress up, you know, and I like to look rock and roll when I'm working and I have a rock and roll bent to me. Mm. But, I, you know, I'm really very much a girly girl and I like dressing up. So that was one of my dressing up moments and they were iconic to me for me. That's if cool. I had them, I would like I would like to have kept them now that I've given them away, but you know, c'est la vie. C'est la vie. All right, my darling. Well, listen, I'm going to love you and leave you. And uh, All right, love you. Yeah. All right, look at that hair. See that hair? Oh, it's girls, if you could see that hair, she's got that posh girl hair. Look at it. Too know, much it's, hair. It is. It is quite clean. It's a miracle. It's unbelievable, that hair. It's like you look like a lioness. Mm. Well, it, it is really, though, isn't it? Now it's really <laughs> All right, my baby, love you.